Namaste and welcome to Live, Love, Engage. I am Gloria Grace Rand and today, as always, it's one of my favorite days because I have a guest and we're going to be uh, chatting about something called mojo marketing, which I'm very intrigued by. Um, so I want to introduce you to Britt Bolnick who is a successful biz owner and magic maker of uh, living a life she loves in Maine, which is where she is coming to us from her backyard, I think, her porch, I think, in Maine right now. And uh, she has traveled the path from financial scarcity to financial independence, something I think most of us would love to do, um, building a six-figure business she loves as a single mama, working less than full-time, and she mentors women who are 100% committed to building thriving businesses that create visibility and wealth without compromising personal life or sanity. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, she teaches women to use authentic connections, which is definitely something I'm all about, um, to build success versus high ad spend and common marketing type. And um, she's also done this. Um, using her tried and true methods of to start a nonprofit pit bull rescue while also running her business, having three days off a week and being an avid book reader and beach walker. So I know I want to learn a lot from you today, Britt, because that's my goal is, <laughs> is to definitely, um, you know, get to that like four day work week or something like that would be lovely. Mm -hmm. So welcome Britt to Live, Love, Engage first off. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, well, I am excited to have you. And, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to talk a little bit about mojo marketing, which is, I guess, your specialty. So what exactly is that and who's it for? So mojo marketing, I think, is a particular form of getting yourself and your work seen that, I mean, you know, I'll preface this by saying I'm sure that men can use it. I work with women and a lot of the, um, a lot of the problems that I help my clients solve and a lot of the strategies that I teach my clients do tend to appeal more towards women than to men. So when I speak, I generally speak using female pronouns. So that doesn't mean that these don't work for men. Mm -hmm. I just don't use them with men. But mojo marketing is a way of really doing the thing that you love and getting it seen in the world without feeling, you know, inauthentic, salesy. Um, I like to say it's marketing without feeling douchey and without feeling like that door-to-door -door salesman that's knocking on the door and trying to convince you why you need something that you never wanted or asked for in the first place. Right. So in a nutshell, Mojo Marketing is about really authentically sharing what you do in a way that helps people understand why they need it if they're aligned for you. It works really well with... Uh, women who are in the coaching industry, women who are in the health and wellness industry, women who are in service-based industries like bookkeepers, website designers, branders, um, those kinds of, of folks. Mm, awesome. Copywriters too, like me? Copywriters, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, how did you come up with this? So the short answer is that I, you know, when I started in arms coaching, which was many years ago, almost, I usually track it by my daughter's age. So she's turning 15 and I think I started it when she was about two. So mm -hmm. we're at the, about the 13 or 14 year mark. Uh, when I started in arms coaching, I had a lot of things that I was passionate about and a lot of skills and I didn't understand how to get it out there mm -hmm. without feeling like I was selling without you know all of the marketing tools that I saw back then 13 or 14 years ago were about how to you know manipulate people into buying how to find people's pain point and poke mm -hmm. it so that they really you know so that you sort of um cause them to feel urgency and fear there's a lot of fear based psychology in marketing strategy and mm -hmm. that felt really icky to me and I didn't I didn't want to be inauthentic I didn't want to be false I didn't want to manufacture fear in people so that they'd buy what I was selling none of that felt right to me um, 
so I found ways of growing my business that didn't feel really inauthentic and didn't feel really manipulative um, and didn't bank on pushing false scare tactics to my, you know, to my prospective clients. And at the same time, a lot of the ways that I built my business have to do with magic and magic as defined by me and other people is the art and science of changing energy. So, you know, for people like you and me, when we have a great offer that goes out over our newsletter list and it's got 0.1 clicks and we're like, it doesn't work. It didn't work. I failed. No one opened it. Maybe nobody wants this. Magic means then taking that and saying, okay, it's probably not true that nobody wants this. However, something didn't work. Let's get really curious about what didn't work because I know in my heart that what I'm doing has value and I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of nobody likes me. Guess I'll just eat worms. That's magic. You're changing your energy about something. And the way that I've grown my business and the way that I teach the women that I work with to grow my business, it takes a lot of personal work. It takes a lot of personal evolution Mm -hmm. and really looking at your own fears and your own beliefs and your own demons and understanding that the external strategies are only going to work when you're doing the inner work. And this is something that I found very particular to women. So Mojo Marketing is a combination of the external strategies, of course. We all need to know those. How do you get higher click rates? How do you get better Facebook visibility? But it's also about understanding for you specifically, what's scary about being visible? Where might you be saying, I want everyone to see me, but you're actually also saying, wow, and that would be really terrifying because we have to work through those pieces in order to have the external strategies working. So that's a little bit about Mojo Marketing. Mojo Marketing takes into consideration the external um, tools and strategies that are going to help you communicate the value of what you're offering to the people that need it. But it also relies on a foundation of inner work and really making sure that you're okay getting what you say you're asking for. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely know the the value of that makes so much sense. And, you know, there's more I wanted to ask you about, but something that you talked about, and I don't know if this is maybe my personal bias, but I, I often wonder, and, and cause like I've been online for over 10 years now as well and, and doing business. And I think I'm wondering if some of that early stuff that was so, you know, salesy and really coming off so hardcore, I wonder if it's because it is more of a coming from a traditional, more masculine energy. And, and, and I think as women, we don't resonate with that very well. Is yes. that, is that what you think? Is that totally. Yeah. Totally. And I think that, you know, one of the, one of the pillars of what I teach is that it is coming from what I call a feminine model of leadership versus a masculine model. And that doesn't necessarily mean male and female, right? Men right. can completely market their business using feminine models of leadership. Mm-hmm. But I think that what we've seen as women, as business owners and entrepreneurs, as emerging and solid leaders is that we don't want to build the way that the patriarchy builds. It didn't, honestly, I'll say it didn't work for them. It doesn't work for them. And it sure as heck doesn't work for us. So when we talk about marketing, the school of thought, the historic school of thought is a patriarchal Mm -hmm. slant. And that just doesn't feel good to us. And it's, it's inauthentic. We don't want to learn how to sell cars. We want to learn how to change our corners of the world and maybe larger than that. So it doesn't, it doesn't resonate. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then now that I'm thinking about it, it really does make sense because it's more of the, that masculine is more of the push. You know, it's, it's that push type of marketing as opposed to, you know, we're more about attracting, pulling people in. Yeah. And that is just more of the nature of what women like to do. We are yeah. the nurturers and we want to just, you know, hold you and, and, you know, and protect you and, and that just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, women are also biologically more programmed to work in community. Mm-hmm. So one of the pillars of Mojo Marketing is that it's based on relationship building, not manipulate, manipulation and sales, you know, consumer psychology. It's based on really establishing collaborative and connective relationships, not selling. And that's one of the reasons why my clients find that it feels better. Women who come to me saying, oh, I just can't sell my things. 
realize that when we start talking about learning how to serve your people versus selling your things, mm -hmm. it's an entirely different frame of mind and it feels very different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, this brings me sort of, because I think we're starting to kind of go down that road a little bit. Why is it perhaps especially important for spiritually connected entrepreneurs to use mojo marketing tactics in, in growing yeah. their business? Oh, I love that question. There are two reasons why it is imperative. One is that as spiritual entrepreneurs, you are very sensitive to not manipulating, not causing harm, and meeting people where they are and showing how you can be of service. Traditional patriarchal models of marketing do not work for spiritual leaders and entrepreneurs because they feel terrible. They feel counterintuitive and they are counterintuitive. So that's one reason. The second reason is that spiritual healers and spiritual entrepreneurs specifically have our own baggage towards the work that we do. We have in many different boxes. We have baggage towards charging and really claiming the value of what we're doing because as healers, as spiritual folks, we want to give. Yeah. And so often there's a disconnect from the value of what we're offering or we're battling this weird mentality that we shouldn't be charging. We shouldn't be getting really successful from the work we're doing. We should be giving it away. Additionally, women who are spiritual healers and entrepreneurs come from a long, long line of women for whom it was not safe to have our brilliances and skills. We come from the times of Holocaust. We come from the times of the burning times. It was not, and often still is not safe for us to be visible in certain arenas. So when someone comes to me who does some kind of work like that and says, I want to, I want to be on stage. I want to retire early. I want to start a nonprofit. I want visibility. I'll say, okay, now tell me what would be absolutely terrifying about that. Because if you can't see that clearly, you and I are going to be working together with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. We have to acknowledge that for many women, for many spiritual healers and entrepreneurs, there is an element of it not being safe for us to be visible. And that's why the way that we're being visible has to feel good. And we have to be addressing the inner work and the uh, personal evolution that is going to be, and healing that's going to be required for us to feel safe and comfortable being visible and getting what we say we're asking for. Yeah, absolutely. I can so relate to that. I mean, I was even getting emotional a little bit because it's, it has absolutely been my journey for the last few years because of, I, I initially started my uh, business as, as doing SEO copywriting, you know, serving small business owners and, you know, getting some, some success with that. But uh, the last few years has been, I've just been feeling this pull for more and wanting to do more and, and realizing now that I do have a lot of gifts that are more intuitive in nature. And, and so now it's been, how do I reconcile these things? How do I interpret? So I recently rebranded as the insightful copywriter. So I could start sort of acknowledging that I, I'm not the typical person. I do things a little bit different, but yeah, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a challenge. And, and, oh, and the value part, I have worked with so many other business owners too, especially people in healing arts and things like that. And having to remind them that if you don't charge and, and if you're even unwilling to advertise, you're doing your clients or your potential clients a disservice because yes. you're depriving them of getting the healing that they need. Yes, that's so, so, so true. And I think that one of the neat things about what you said is that and this is very common, women that I work with tend to do things that are being done in the world, but they're doing them in really out-of-the-box ways, like what you just said. Lots of people are doing SEO copywriting and all that stuff, but to do it really intuitively and with a spiritual anchor is so different. And when you're doing something that is a little out-of-the-box or unique, there's this further layer of like, but this is how other people, like no one's doing it this way, but this is bringing woo into a non-woo, like I have a client who is this amazing OBM and virtual assistant 
And she realized that she needs to start marketing herself as a spiritually guided OBM and virtual assistant. And mm -hmm. she even added things on her pre-qualifying form and, and consultation form. You know, what did, do you have a spiritual practice? Um, are you, you know, and, and, and it was, it's, it's hard to come out of the closet and say, I do this very black and white thing, but I bring something else to it. And that's where that visibility is really important because the people who choose you, as I'm sure you know, they need to know about that aspect because that's going to be precisely why they hire you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what are three core tools or requirements for using Mojo Marketing that you've, you've come to see are really important to help people to get their business seen? That's a great question. So the first one is definitely being able and willing and having the support to really look very objectively at yourself, your own fears and your own brilliances and strength. So if you are someone who, for instance, does start copywriting sessions by pulling a tarot card or by consulting the I Ching or something like that, really being able to look at yourself honestly and say, you know, this is why this is uncomfortable. Oh, look, I really want to use this tool, but I'm afraid to. But being really honest with yourself about who you are and how you do things and what is scary or uncomfortable about that. I'd say that's the first thing. And that one, it's really important to get support with. My, my best friend, Jen Moore, um, who uh, wrote a book called um, Empathic Mastery, she always says you can't read the label from outside the jar, from inside the jar. Mm. So if you're sitting, you are the jar, you cannot count on being able to see your own label. So really having people that can guide and help you and say, oh, well, but I see there's this unique thing about you or I see you do things differently. The second piece, and this is also really hard if you're bringing a fear of visibility or a fear of judgment or you know, discomfort with any of those things is to be really authentic about who you are and what makes you different. And this is another place where it's difficult for women because as children, most of us were told not to boast, not to stand out from the crowd, not to say we were better at things than other people, not to volunteer answers in class. We were taught to be smaller. Almost every single woman I have ever met in my entire life was taught in some way, shape, or form to be smaller. But in order to be vis visible, you have to be comfortable being bigger. Right. So really understanding what is authentic and really neat and different and fun and interesting about you and using those. For many years, I tried to hold back on promoting pit bulls that needed homes and my personal page. Cause I was like, my personal page was also my business page. I didn't want people to see too many pit bulls. And lo and behold, I had a client who signed on with me. She had a couple of different calls with different coaches. And she said, you know, I did resonate with you the most, but honestly, knowing your work with pit bulls and knowing that at least some of what I pay you every month is going to go to saving pit bulls. It became a slam dunk for me. And I thought, Oh, Maybe I shouldn't stop sharing pit bulls so much, but that's one of the things that makes me stand apart. Um, so really being authentic and, and being able to be comfortable with and own the things that make you different and the things that you care about, because no matter who you are in this world and what kind of work you're doing, there are other people doing the same work. Mm -hmm. People are going to choose you because of you and they can only do that if they really see you. Yeah. Um, and then the third piece is to really get support around your hook and your messaging. So, so often as entrepreneurs and business owners, we talk about the work we do in terms of what we know people need. That's not how you have to talk about it. You have to talk about it in terms of what your people want. You know what you're going to do with them. Yeah. They don't need to know that. <laughs> they need to understand that the thing that, you, that they want, you can help them get. So to really, and that takes a different brain. It's one of the reasons why I have copywriters um, in my programs helping my clients. Writing copy, as you well know, is not like writing anything else. And it's very, especially marketing copy. Mm -hmm. So get support in understanding what you do for whom and talk about that, not how you're going to do it. That's a really common mistake in marketing. So those are like three really starter tools mm -hmm. for people. Yeah, that's... I, I think all of those are absolutely spot on for helping people. And, and especially even just that, that last point too, um, 
when I first started doing discovery calls with, with clients, I, you know, wound up like telling them all the things that they could do to fix their website. And then, you know, then you'd be surprised later when they're like, don't hire you because I've just told them how to do it. And so they can do it themselves. I had to learn how to do, not do that. So it's like yeah. tell them what they need, but not how to go about doing it. Because, yeah, because it's not really in service if what they need is you. And if they think they just got a fix that is going to allow them to save money when that's not really, they need a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what actually prompted you to even go down this path to become a, a business owner and, and, you know, and to, and to, that led you to even to develop, you know, mojo marketing and all that. Cause you said you've been, you came up with that, what about like 13 years ago. So what, uh, what put you on this entrepreneurial journey? Well, mojo marketing is, is more recent in arms coaching started. Um, my daughter's father left when she was about 15 months old. He signed sole custody away to me, uh, pretty much disappeared, no child support. And I was just, destitute. We had to move back in with my mother. I had to work six or seven nights a week in a local restaurant so I could be with the babe during the day. And I just thought, you know, the silver lining to not sharing custody and not having another parent involved is that this is, this is my show. We get to do whatever I want to do. And I want to make a really good life for me and this little person. And I knew that I didn't want to work in a restaurant. I knew that it wasn't working. And I knew that I wanted freedom of time to raise my daughter the way that I wanted to raise her and be with her as much as possible. Because mm -hmm. I had an inkling that we'd get to this point where now she's almost 15 and I have to bribe her to come out of her room. <laughs> so I knew I had a fleeting amount of time when she actually wanted to be with me. And I That's wanted true. to take advantage of that. Yeah. And I knew that I wanted to do work helping women. I'd worked with women in a maximum security prison, um, I'd work in, worked in mentorship programs and I really wanted to help women. So in arms coaching started out as parenting coaching uh, mm -hmm. based on my experiences with my daughter and all the education I got in order to have her self-education. Uh, and then it turned into life coaching because the women who were coming to me for parenting coaching, it was bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And then about seven or eight, eight or nine years ago, I really, life coaching just wasn't where it was at for me. And I need to completely enjoy what I was doing. And the women that I loved working with the most were women who were building businesses and I had done it in a way that completely suited me and was basically exactly the way I wanted to do it without really compromising or sacrificing. So that was about eight years ago in arms coaching turned to solely business coaching. Although we do a lot, it's really a blend of personal evolution and business coaching because in my book, you can't separate the two. Um, and Mojo Marketing was just me basically thinking, okay, how did I get here? What were my strategies? What were the things that worked? What are the things that are working over and over and over again with my clients right. and putting them into a little package? Nice, nice. Um, I just had a question and it disappeared from my brain, but it'll come back to me in a moment. So I'm, I'm hoping that something else will come back to me in the meantime. Um, <laughs> Well, let me see. Let's, boy, brain fart. All right. Um, oh, I know what I was going to ask you. <laughs> there we go. It's getting to be the end of the day when I'm recording yes. this. So I apologize, but I wanted to ask you about, so uh, 2020 has been an interesting year. Um, and now that we are, we're recording this, it's already the beginning of August. So um, has, you know, a lot of business owners have had to pivot, uh, as they say, they've, you know, some have gone out of business, some have decided to, you know, try something different. Has, has the pandemic and everything, has that impacted you at all? Or are you um, just, you know, going with the flow? I mean, folks who, well, professionally, in terms of in-arms coaching, folks who need to make their business work now need to make it work more than ever. So I've actually had an influx of clients who are saying, there is no way I'm doing this without support. This is imperative to my survival. Mm -hmm. um, the money that folks have gotten has helped people to sort of take little bites of investing in their business that they weren't able to before. So that's been a weird silver lining. Yeah. Um, and it's created, you know, personally, it's created a lot more space for me. We're all home most of the time. I love that. I love the world slowing down. We have a beautiful, you know, almost nine acres, including 400 feet of riverfront. So I don't, 
I mean, I need to go out to get food, but other than that, I'm perfectly (laughs) happy to just stay here with the kids and my husband is home. And um, so I definitely see pluses and minuses, but I think that what I've seen from in arms coaching perspective is that folks who are really committed now understand that they cannot do it alone and they shouldn't be doing it alone. And it's way too risky to do alone. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. That's definitely a lesson I had learned in my business. It's so much easier. Um, well, number one, you, you can't do everything by yourself forever um, without burning out, being stressed out, yeah. you know, things you can only do so much because if you want to be able to have a well-rounded life. Um, And then the other thing is if you really want to grow your business, you definitely need support. Yes. Um, Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, which brings me to um, how do, if people want to get in touch with you and they resonate with you and and would like to get some support um, and find out more about Mojo Marketing, what's the best way for people to contact you? Yeah, so they can go to my website, which is just inarmscoaching.com. If you sign up for the Biz Breakthrough quiz that's on there, and that's just a really great pulse-taking quiz to help you understand where you're stuck in your business or what pieces aren't working, Mm -hmm. if you go to that quiz and take it, you will actually get an option to buy a $9 um, Alchemy of Marketing Mojo Marketing training through that. Um, that will come to you like in a day or two. It's in that nurture sequence. Um, So the Biz Breakthrough Quiz is a great quiz to take just to really understand what's happening in your business. And if there is anything that's stuck or not working, what it is and how to start to fix it. And then you'll see the Mojo Marketing, Alchemy of Marketing training in there um, in your email. Uh, but you know, the, the website is a great place to start. I'm ridiculously active on Facebook. So you can find my business page just at Britt Bolnick on Facebook. Um, and I put a lot of love into my content on there. So I like to think that it's really fun to follow. Uh, so I welcome folks coming over and chiming in and engaging there. People can reach out and ask questions, but those are the two best places to find me. All right. Awesome. Well, I will be sure to have that in the show notes for those of you who are, you know, missed it, don't have a pen and paper handy to write stuff down. So don't worry about it. Um, Well, yes. And I have seen some of your stuff on there and uh, I definitely, I think I'm pretty sure that I followed you. And if not, I'll go make sure that I do when I get off of here Um, because yeah, I'm very active on Facebook as well. So I know it's a great, great place um, to hang out. And yes. I'm just, I'm not ready to deal with TikTok right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Enough that I have to see the videos for my teenagers. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else um, that you think would be helpful? Any other advice that we haven't covered already that you'd like to share? You know, for folks who are struggling with marketing and getting seen, it's really not something to struggle with and DIY. It is such a, um, it will save you so much time and money to just get some help when you need it versus trying to DIY it because this is really not something that you can kind of just intuitively figure out yourself and it will cost you. It will cost you your goals to struggle with it. So I really just advise people to not struggle past the point where it's not productive for you and reach out to someone that you trust or start researching who helps with things like this Mm -hmm. um, and get some help because, you know, for folks like us who, who really have heart centered work, we want to be doing the work. We don't be want to be messing around, figuring out what to say to help people understand that they need us. We just want to be in our zone of genius doing our work. So invest in whatever will help you to spend most of your business time in that zone of genius and way less in, you know, in struggle and strife and feeling like no one wants what you have. Because no matter what it is, I assure you that people not only want it, but they're looking for you. And if you're not visible, they can't find you. So you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the people that need you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, there are people out there that are meant to be with you. Mm-hmm. And, and you're hurting them by keeping them at bay. You're hurting yourself because you're not able to thrive as fast as you could be able to do. So yeah, getting help is 
absolutely the thing to do. I highly recommend that. So yeah. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm glad that the, the weather cooperated. <laughs> so this is good. This is good. I yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and in case those of you had heard the door open midway, my dog was scratching on the door. So I thought she wanted in because it was thundering here. But then, of course, when I opened the door, she was gone. I can uh, relate so much. I know. Oh, well. Well, thank you for being here again. Thank you everyone out there who is listening and uh, has subscribed and you're watching on YouTube. I so appreciate you and um, tune in to the next episode when we'll have more awesomeness here. So until next time, as always, I encourage you to live fully, love deeply and engage authentically. <laughs>